Hello everyone, welcome to Shenlu.org on YouTube and uh, I'm here with my good friend and financial modeling expert Daniel Sainz-Berhurst. Hi Daniel, how are you? I'm well. It's really nice to have you here in Sydney. Thank you so much for getting me here and uh, I'm really excited to spend the next few weeks talking about Excel and Power BI uh, in Australia. But let's talk about uh, financial modeling and Power BI. Mm -hmm. We are here to debate uh, whether financial modelers and uh, um, and financial analysts should even bother learning Power BI. What are the advantages mm -hmm. of doing it? In your experience, what do you think about Power BI and financial modeling? Mm -hmm. I see them as two very, very different things. Mm -hmm. I mean, with a with a pure financial model, I mean, you're talking about a P&L, a cash flow, and a balance sheet, and you really don't need Power BI for yeah. that. But so often, the data that comes into your financial model is in a, a database format, and you, we often find, um, as a as a modeler, you're asked to do a lot of data analysis as well. Yes. It's not just building. Quite often, it's very rare that I'm just asked to build a financial model. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, but but quite often, the data is in the data that you need to get, you need to sort of transform it and sort of wrestle with the data and get it into a format that you can actually use. And so, of course, now we can use Power Query for that or, you know, to transform or to get the data into a format that's actually useful for your financial model. Yeah. Interesting you mentioned that because uh, uh, I, I find that I have done very little bit of financial modeling work, but mm -hmm. from what I've done, most of the time the people who I have consulted with ask me always to, hey, we could build some really fantastic models, but we are not so good at visualizing them. Mm -hmm. So can you go and take the final outputs that you prepare, come up with uh, an executive dashboard or a CFO page that will explain what's going on underneath the model and uh, communicate those choices or options. And I've done that work with Excel, but if I want to get those projects today, mm -hmm. I would always try to use Power BI mm -hmm. uh, and, and try to make those visualizations. So in that sense, I find uh, for a financial modeler, having Power BI knowledge is always helpful because then mm -hmm. you have another tool at your disposal to uh, share the stories mm -hmm. and, and talk. Mm -hmm. But I find it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, sort of a choice that you need to make at the beginning. Yeah. So you need, same, same as when you're building a dashboard, you know, before Power BI came out, when you're building a dashboard in just, just in Excel, you had to sort of make that choice. Am I going to go with a pivot table or am I going to just use ordinary formulas? And you kind of need to decide that up front. And now you've just got more options basically to choose from. So when you do need to do a visualization, are you going to go, are you going to stick with Excel or are you going to go into Power BI? Because they're quite, quite different tools um, and it's a really different method. It is a different method, but... Uh uh, as you said, most of the time, it's not just modeling that, that you are doing everything. So, I find that having knowledge in both tools will help you make the right decisions. Like, you would not, uh, for example, when I teach people how to use Excel, I won't teach them just formulas alone or pivot tables alone. I teach them both and then I tell them, uh, you can pick and choose which you want or you can mix them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like you can mix Excel and Power BI in, in the same mm -hmm. thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, having knowledge in both means you, you could then go and uh, apply them for different situations or parts of work and, and go with that. Mm -hmm. And I think having, you know, as a modeler, even though um, Power BI is not going to be your tool of choice in every situation, just having that skill set it's just going to make you more valuable and make you, your, your skill set is just going to be so much better developed if you can use, if you have that choice of being able to use Power BI or Excel, you know, if it was just, if it's just calc, you know, calculation, scenario analysis, that sort of thing, you'll stick with Excel. Whereas if the data is in a kind of database format and you need to visualize, then you go with Power BI and that's how I see it. That's very good. And, uh, yeah, I agree with you. And, um, I mean, uh, in terms of the, the capabilities, I find that, as you rightly said, Excel is very good for calculating and building scenarios and visualizing different, uh, understanding you know, dashboards and those kind of things. Uh, Power BI is good for visualizing storytelling parts. Um, just to give you one example, the, the, uh, I, I try to teach people 
how to build a, a retirement calculator using Power BI, just using my Power BI courses, just so they can understand how to do some of the stuff that traditionally done in Excel mm. with Power BI. Because a calculator is something you would do yeah, yeah, in exactly. a model. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So it has scenarios, it has inputs and an output changes. And um, the, the trickiest part of the whole process is to write a formula that is equivalent to the FB formula in Excel. In Excel, you have mm. FB, so you calculate future value mm. of, of an investment over time. But in Power BI, there is no FB. So <laughs> we would have to actually write the arithmetic work representation of that the equation for that mm. in, in Power BI. Oh, wow. So that's the that's the hard part but I I'm hopeful that eventually Microsoft will start adding some of those yeah. functions into Power BI as well. So then so they keep adding more yeah, functions adding which more, is great. Yeah. Every month there is something new so hopefully yeah. next month we might see that too there. Yeah, yeah. So the other thing I wanted to mention quite often is that the, the reason we often don't go with Power BI is because um, you know, when you put your data into a database, it looks really, really different to what you're used to. You know, with a model, you might sort of lay something out, like in a pivot table type, you know, the output yeah. of a pivot table would be, it might have products down the side and have months across the top, and it's kind of in a scheduled sort of format, and that's how you're really used to seeing it in a financial model, and then you, you try and put that into Power BI, Power BI is not going to like that format very much. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. So, I... Again, I think this is another skill that a modeler needs to cultivate, which is mm -hmm. to understand how databases and tables and relationships work. And it doesn't, they don't have to be like as skilled as a database admin, but mm -hmm. they need to have some of those basic skills, like they need to know what tables are, what is, mm -hmm. what is linked to what. And, and those relationships, to, yeah, it's exactly. not intuitive. To, a, yeah. to an analyst. Yeah, exactly. Because you don't come from that background. So so for, it's for, a, for a finance analyst, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not necessarily intuitive mm -hmm. the way that relational databases work. Yeah. But uh, I think having that skill is another thing because that mm -hmm. is another um, another aspect that you can reuse all through your life as a, as a modeler. Absolutely. So I find that having that, that, uh, that understanding at a very basic level itself can go very far in, in your career. Mm -hmm. Not good. Yeah, and I think um, the other thing I think that's really important about, um, that I love about Power BI is that it kind of forces you to be visual, yes. because as finance people, uh, we are not we are not visual people at all. Like, I'm shocking. I, I really have had to teach myself how to be visual, because I'm a numbers person, you know, yeah. and I only care about the accuracy. I mean, the financial model is all you care about is the accuracy of the numbers, making sure that everything adds up, that everything is accurate, that you get your forecasts as as correct, you know, like making sure that everything is accurate, you know, the accuracy of the numbers is paramount. And you don't really think about the presentation, and we have to, you know, we have to now. Yeah, yeah, I think that's another um, paradigm change, or, or mm -hmm. like if you open Excel spreadsheet, you're looking at a grid of a million cells, each cell asking, put a number here, put a number here. Whereas if you open Power BI, it just shows a blank canvas, like a PowerPoint presentation asking, the chart here, yes. the table here. Yes. So the the perspective is different, and I think that's what forces people to reorient their thoughts and mm. start looking. Okay, maybe I should try to do this here. I should do that there. And, mm. and that itself can be a very um, very good way to learn and, mm. and understand and use it. Yeah, because often um, I think um, you know, as a you know, as as you have as well, you know, when you've been using Excel for decades, yeah. you sort of tend to restrict your thinking. <laughs> to, to those sort of boxes, yeah. you know, that, that everything has to fit inside a box. And you also restrict your visualization thinking into the kind of charts that Excel can do. Mm. And so you, you have to start thinking, you know, what other, what other charts you could use rather than just a pie chart or just a line chart or, yeah. you know, just those standard ones that Excel spits out all the time. And Power BI just gives you so many more options. And what's quite nice sometimes is to actually think about what the data is telling you and to sketch it out rather than just starting with an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, totally agree. I think whether you're using Excel or Power BI or anything else for that matter, it always helps to think through what you want to communicate, maybe sketch it out and then mm. go in and invest some time and effort into building it because if you're making some mistakes, you can easily catch them when you're sketching it. You can see, oh, maybe this won't work or mm. maybe it doesn't really 
tell you what, what you want to tell the effectively so you can go and choose stuff. But it's kind of an iterative process, I find. Yeah, I, I, you sort of, you sketch something and you think you know what you're saying and then you put the data in and go, oh, that isn't actually what I intended <laughs> <laughs> for it to say. So you, you sort of go backwards and forwards. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, uh, um, so in closing, uh, do, do you agree that whether you're a financial modeler or not, I think learning probably helps you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think um, you know people often ask me, you know, what is what is the skill that I should learn, you know, as a, as a person, you know, as a financial professional, what is what is the number one skill, and uh, you know, I think some of these new these new tools uh, in Excel, it's modern modern Excel as we call it, I think is really where the future of of, of Microsoft Excel is going, um, and you really need to uh, to know how to use them and what what they can be used for, and you, you may not necessarily use them all the time. Sometimes you just go with a standard Excel spreadsheet, but knowing what they can do and what's available to you is going to make you so much more valuable to your organization. Exactly. Thank you so much. And uh, as, you, as you heard her saying, I think uh, don't limit yourself to the spreadsheet grid alone. Think outside the box and see uh, whether you can apply Power BI or just standalone features like Power Query and Power Pivot in Excel uh, to enhance your workflows. Thank you so much, Daniel. I hope uh, I will have a good day today and then um, I hope I, I get to spend more time in Australia. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, I hope so too. Yeah, thank you. Thanks.